Can I talk to you about Roger Penrose? Sure. You've talked to Roger on the portal, but also in between the lines and offline, just everything you've said about Roger Penrose. For, for people who don't know, he just recently, a few days ago, won the uh, 2020, shared the 2020 uh, Nobel Prize for Physics. But it's clear to me that he had like a deep personal impact on you, a connection with you. Uh, in terms of both your love of mathematics, just the way you see the world. Like the, this is the Eddie Van Halen conversation. This is clearly somebody who's profound in your worldview. Can you, can you talk about Roger? Can you talk about what it means that he won this highest of prizes? Just in general, let's celebrate the man. Yeah, okay. So first of all, there are two other people who won this prize. I'm sorry, I just didn't happen to know who they were before they won. Um. Roger is a very, it is not Roger in particular, but the class from which Roger comes that is so important. So I would put Roger in the class of Feynman, Einstein, Dirac, Yang. Um, put Witten in there? Or yeah. No? I mean, Whit Witten's a, a special case, but Witten is weirdly the reverse of the Roger Penrose story, right? Because Witten is the first physicist to win a mathematical fields medal, the highest honor in mathematics. Penrose is in some sense a mathematician who's now won the Nobel Prize. So it's a perfect sort of a couplet. Yeah. Um, Roger's class means everything to me. That's the highest achievement of the human mind. I'd probably throw Bach in with Feynman and Dirac and company, right? <laughs> um, I think that he was so inventive. It was very frustrating to watch this career. It was a little bit frustrating to watch Feynman's career. Um, Feynman was so good, and had he been born slightly different at a slightly different time, I believe his claim on physics would be far greater. Um, I feel like Penrose, in some sense, came up a very difficult path because, you see, Einstein effectively solved most of the most important problems in general relativity right at the beginning. As a result, the children of Einstein are impoverished because there wasn't as much to pick off of the trees and sell at the market, whereas Bohr didn't, and, and Planck didn't do nearly as good of a job with quantum theory, so there's lots to do in quantum theory. I think that Roger affected me personally um, by a diagram that I saw in a paper of Herman Gluck at the University of Pennsylvania. It was the first picture I'd ever seen of the hop vibration sketched. And that, you know, weirdly, I brought that to the Rogan program um, in order to sort of convey the wonder. It was recapitulating my own journey. I think I probably saw that at like age 16 or something, and it just flipped my mind. Roger is incredibly visual. He's incredibly geometric. He's incredibly sui generis. He just does his own thing. He's got lots of bets. None of them had really come through the way you would hope. And I think they stretched the rules, to be blunt about it. Uh, to give him the prize. Yeah, I do. You, you said this thing on Twitter, which is beautiful, that every once in a while comes a, a human being that gives uh, value to the prize versus the prize giving value yeah. to the human. Two different kinds of prizes. The reason that we care about the Nobel Prize isn't because of Alfred Nobel. It's because it came along at the right time to reward um, Einstein, Dirac, Schrodinger, Feynman. Most of the, most of the people who should have won one, most of the awards are not good in the sense that they don't really follow. The prize is used to rewrite history. That's its problem. So it's you, ha you should have a love-hate relationship with it because on the one hand, it does focus the world on what really matters. And on the other hand, it distorts what really matters. And both of those functions take place simultaneously. In this case, I think that they violated their own rules slightly. So it wasn't really clearly a case of a prediction and a discovery in the typical fashion, but they like, we better give this award to somebody of that highest caliber to 
make sure that the prize is fully funded with prestige going forward. That's that's sort of my weird speculative guess as to what happened. And so Roger's getting on in years and if the person should be alive. So they, uh, I think they bent the rules and I think they couldn't have bent it for a better person. And I hope they will not bend the rules out of weakness, but out of strength in future. It would be great to get Madame Wu and uh, Emmy Nerder a posthumous prize along with Doug Prasher, George Sudarshan, uh, and George Zweig, as well as Ernst Stuckelberg, Nobel Prizes. There have been some terrible omissions, uh, the first two being females who revolutionized our view of the world. And I take a very dim view of people pushing for prizes for people from ethnic groups or genders or whatever in order to make it plural and inclusive if it's not following the work. And I feel very clear that in a few cases, we know there was a real problem with the Nobel Committee because um, we have stunning accomplishments. You know, try to get through a day as a physicist without Nerder's theorem and try to imagine the universe without Madame Wu's discovery that left and right don't appear to be symmetric. I mean, these are terrible omissions and they're a, a huge blot on science for not being more inclusive when it matters. Yeah, so just like you said, the Nobel Prize is plagued by omissions as much as... And distortions and dilutions. For example, Dirac and Schrodinger were, I believe, given the the prize in the same year. There's no reason that those two people needed to dilute each other. The same thing with, uh, you know, Dyson was an omission. Tomonaga probably got included in part because we had an opportunity to show that something had happened on both sides of the Pacific after the war. Um... But I don't think we needed to dilute um, Weinberg or Feynman or Schwinger. It just makes me it makes me so, somewhat sick. All of these people are such important giants, and it has to do with the field, I think, not wanting to create luminaries and superstars who could have defended the field from budget cuts and worldly pressures. So I think it's really important that we have absolute superstars because we produce superstars. We acknowledge them. We don't dilute them. And that we bend the rules to make sure that the prize stays funded with the prestige that comes from giving it to the Roger Penroses, uh, Albert Einsteins, and Paul Duracs of the world.